One calorie is the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. That is the basic definition used in scientific literature, introduced in the early 19th century by a French engineer named Nicolas Clément. In nutritional terms, a calorie is the unit of energy the body gets from drinking or eating food. For example, this apple is roughly 100,000 calories. Yes, I said 100,000. You see, we have different ways of spelling calories all over the globe. We all say calories, but what we actually say is kilocalories. Kilo being the prefix in the metric system for the factor of thousand. It comes from the Greek word helioi. In Europe, for example, you will see the letter K before cal, meaning kilocalories. And have you ever wondered what the J means that it is written on every food label here? Well, in the early 20th century, the unit calorie was replaced by the unit joule. One calorie is 4.2 joules, which is the international unit of energy. However, calories were so widely used that people were too accustomed to it, so many countries never removed the term calories and just started writing both terms on the label, which is the case until today. The United States took another approach. They didn't write joules in the label, but the word calories is written with a capital C. This capital C is a way of saying thousand in the US and in Canada as well. For the context of this video, I will keep saying calories, but what I actually mean is kilocalories. Now in the context of food, calories are measured through the energy provided by macronutrients. The three main macronutrients are fat, carbohydrates and protein. Protein. protein and carbohydrates provide around 4 calories per gram, while fat provides 9 calories per gram. For example, 100 grams of peanut butter has 50 grams of fat, 25 grams of protein and 15 grams of carbohydrates, and if you add the calories from these specific macronutrients, you end up with 610 calories per 100 grams of peanut butter. And this is how every food and drink gets measured. But have you ever wondered how companies even know this? How does a farm know that the chicken breast provides 100 calories? and about 22 grams of protein per 100 grams. To measure the total calorie amount of food, laboratories use a device called a calorie meter. It burns the food sample and then measures the released heat to provide the caloric content. Measuring the macronutrients, however, involves multiple techniques such as the Dumas method for protein content or gas chromatography for fat. I will write the techniques for the macronutrients in the description in case you want to learn more about them. So quick summary, food consists of macronutrients that provide energy in the form of calories that are our body can use. Now let's talk about the other side and it's the expenditure of calories. Why do we even need to eat calories and what are we using them for? Every physiological function of our body needs a certain amount of energy. Simply thinking about something, maintaining our body temperature or moving a body part, everything we do requires energy. For example, raising your arms requires your deltoid muscles to contract and these contractions of the muscle fibers need energy. The heavier your arm is, the more energy is required to raise it in the air. That is why heavier people need more energy than small smaller people even if they do the exact same movement. Heavier people burn more calories for moving a certain body part because that body part is heavier and it simply requires more energy to be moved. If you now lose weight, your body needs less and less energy for simply existing, which is the reason you lose weight at a slower and slower pace when losing weight if you eat the same amount of calories. It's not because your body gets used to losing weight, it's simply because as you get leaner and lighter, your body requires less energy to function. All that energy now needs to come from somewhere and because our body can't create energy out of thin air, we need to consume food so our body can convert it to energy through metabolic processes. Ever heard someone say nobody breaks the laws of thermodynamics? That is exactly what they refer to. Energy can only be converted from one source to another and can never be created out of thin air. For humans it needs, we convert the energy that is stored in food to heat for our body temperature or we convert it to movement when walking down the street. Now to lose weight you simply have to consume fewer food to create less energy than you burn or you burn more energy than the calories to eat through food. How much you might ask? So to burn one kilograms of fat to 2.2 pounds, you need to burn approximately 7,000 calories. So let's say you are in a 500 calorie daily deficit, that would be around 14 days or two weeks for one kilograms of fat. You lose water as well in this process, which is the reason your scale weight goes down a bit faster than that rate. However, there is a small caveat. In order to use the energy that is stored in food, we first have to break it down into particles that then can be stored in our body. We cannot simply store an apple in our legs and then use it when going for a run. So, and this metabolic process of breaking down requires energy itself. Remember, everything we do requires energy, 
and that includes breaking down food that we eat. And this finally brings me to the point why everything on my channel is high in protein and why I am such a big believer in a high protein diet. Our body requires more energy to break down protein than it needs for breaking down fat. Approximately 25% of the calories from protein are needed to break it down. This means that if you eat 100 calories worth of chicken breast, which is almost pure protein, you only absorb 75 calories because our body needs 25 calories to break it down. This is called the thermic effect of food or TEF, also known as diet included thermogenesis. Now interestingly, the TEF of fat is only 3%, which makes sense because it doesn't require a lot of energy to convert fat to fat that is then stored in our body. This is also why most of the recipes on my channel are generally low in fat. It's not because I think fat makes you gain fat or fat is bad or however, it's just because you require more energy to eat the other macronutrients and over time this makes quite a huge difference. Having said that, eating fat is quite important for our body to function properly. So that's why when you eat fat, it's better to eat good fat sources like avocado, nuts or olive oil because calories add up quickly so they might as well be from a proper fat source. I hope this quick summary helped you to understand calories a bit more. Obviously there is a lot more to discuss here. One last thing, I made a cookbook with over 220 recipes at this point. All the recipes are low in calories and high in protein and have these principles that I just told you in mind, which can help you lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life. I put a ton of work in this book, it's very affordable and you will get every recipe update for free once you've bought it. The link is in the description.